Praise the Lord. How are you today? God bless you and thanks for watching. Today, by God's grace and by the help of the Holy Spirit, her lesson is going to be titled, Why Judgment is Storing in the Church. Why Judgment is Storing in the Church. Amen. We're going to look at 1 Peter 4, 17. It reads, For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the hand of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Amen. If it begins with us first, what will be the hand of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Praise the Lord. The word of God is telling us here that the judgment is going to start from the house of God. Yes. Why would judgment start from the house of God? We are children of God after all. And we are praising God. We are worshiping God in his house. So why would God want to judge his children? Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to look at Matthew 20, Matthew 13. Let's look at 24. Amen. Matthew 13, 24. It says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is like a man who sowed good seed in his seed, in his field. But why men slept, his enemies came and sold tars among the weak and went its way. Amen. But when the grain had sprouted, and produce a crop, then the tars also appear. Praise the Lord. So from this passage, we could see that the enemy is the devil. The enemy has sown seed in the field of God, which is the church. Praise the Lord. And so this enemy has really infiltrated into the church and it has also affected some of the uh, seed that the Lord planted in the church and so God needs to purge out the tars amen the bad seed sown by the enemy the devil praise the Lord God is holy and his church must be holy and pure. So God wants to purge the church from uncleanliness, from unholiness, from lawlessness. Yes, so that we'll be able to know the difference between the holy children of God and the unholy children of Satan. Praise the Lord. And how do we identify this? It's by their fruit. It's by their work. The work of righteousness. The work of obedience. Obeying the word of God. So there's going to be a separation process. And so this separation process is the judgment of God. Praise the Lord. When you uh, read further this passage, um, the servants was asking the owner of the field, do you want me to pull up the tars? He said, no, leave it. Leave the tars. Let them grow together. Let the tars and the weed, let them grow together. Then during the harvest, we're going to do the separation. Praise the Lord. So God is separating the tars from the weed. Praise the Lord. And the tars are the lawlessness. The people who worship God with their mouth 
and their heart is far from God. The people who have faith in God but lacks the fruits of righteousness, they lack the works of righteousness. Those people who are teaching false gospel, who are teaching prosperity, and these are the tars in the church which will be removed through the judgment of God. Amen. And uh, why? Because God is just and holy and his church must be holy. Jesus says, I'm coming back for a blameless church. Amen. God is righteous. Also, that the enemy may be put to shame. Yes. And the enemy enemy of God will not have any excuse or to be able to reproach God. Therefore, God is going to start judgment from his church. So, the tars and the wheat have been growing together all this while. But this time, there's going to be separation. And the judgment of God is going to separate the tar from the wheat. Let's look at verse 30 of Matthew 24. No, Matthew 13, sorry. It says, uh, verse 20, verse 30. It says, Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, First, gather together the tars and bind them in bundles to burn to burn them, but gather the wheat into my burn. Amen. And verse 41 says, The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. And also in one of the Proverbs, the uh, parables of Jesus, it, it said, Many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, we prophesy in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We preach and we do wonders and signs, miracles in your name. And Jesus will say, depart from me, O you workers of iniquity. So, my brothers and sisters, God is going to judge his people first. Praise the Lord. And also, another reason why God is going to uh, start judgment from the church is also to reward those who have been faithful to him. Amen. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a faithful God. So it's time for reward and it's also time to judge those who have been careless with their life, with their relationship with God who have been unfaithful, maltreating the other seven, the other brethren, who have not been obeying God's word. And so they will be judged. Let's look at one way God was going to judge the church in Revelation 2, 20. Jesus sent a message to the church in Thyatira. Um, in verse 20, it says, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow the woman, Jezebel, who calls herself prophetess, to teach and seduce my servant to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. So God has been giving people a lot of time to repent all this while. Repent, sending messages to them, giving them um, time to repent, to examine themselves. Verse... um, 22 says, Indeed, I will cast out into a sick bed. God said, I'm going to cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation. 
unless they repent of their deed. So this uh, scripture, the Lord is saying, I'm going to cast her into sick bed. I'm going to make her sick. And unless she repent, she will die. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to examine ourselves. Judgment has already begun. So everybody is going to be rewarded. How have you been serving the Lord faithfully or just do it your way? How have I been worshiping God? Is it with my mouth and not with my heart? Have I been obedient to God's will? Have, have I been following him, seeking his kingdom first and his righteousness? God is going to judge everyone according to their works. Praise the Lord. And the lawlessness, the Bible says, God is going to separate first and cast them out. Then he will reward those who have been working with him in righteousness, in holiness, and who have been truly worshipping him in spirit and in truth. So my brother, there's still room for repentance. We need to examine our lives. The Bible says that God is not mocked. God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. So what are you sowing? What am I sowing? We still have a little time to repent. So let's repent. Faith only cannot save. The Bible says, just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works, without works of obedience, without works of righteousness is dead. And God is going to cast all that into the fire. Yes, in John 15, um, 2, Jesus says, those who are not bearing fruit, he's going to cast them out. He's going to pluck them out of the vine. The branches that are not bearing fruit, he's going to cast them out. Let me read from John 15, 2. It says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. It takes away. So there's a taking away now. And many are going to fall away because they've been careless. Yes, they've been careless with their faith, with their spiritual life, spiritual work with God. God is still giving us a room, a little bit of chance Let's repent quickly. Let's repent quickly. Jesus says, I'm coming, son. I'm coming quickly. And my reward is coming with me to give to everyone according to his work. I pray the Lord will find us faithful. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, please repent of your sins. Believe in him that he died for your sins. And receive him as your personal Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. Be baptized through immersion and begin to follow him as you carry your cross daily and obeying his word. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen.